welcome to Pay Taka Talks episode 5. Thank you so much to everyone who has watched our fourth episode. Joining us last time was The Nudge. This time I'll be taking the back seat because our guest host will be the one asking the questions this time. Let's welcome back Nudge. Hey everybody. I'm excited to join you for another episode of your podcast here and uh, to learn more about uh, what, what Petaka has been doing here in the Philippines and uh, your plans, I guess, for next year. So, right. thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, welcome back. Mm. Okay, so, uh, Jomar? Yeah, uh, where do we start? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot to talk about uh, Petaka and BCH in the Philippines. I would love to know how this, uh, how this wallet the idea for it came about and how it was developed and perhaps maybe when, when you guys started. Mm -hmm. All right, um, so the... Uh, yeah, we started we, way back to We have more grasp of the history. Yeah, okay. we started way back 2018. Mm -hmm. And then uh, initially we wanted to create an e-wallet to compete with other uh, e-wallets here in the Philippines. Unfortunately, yeah, like what we did in the past, um, we found out that uh, the Banco Central of the Central Bank of the Philippines or the Banco Central of Filipinas had a little uh, steep um, requirement for uh, e-wallets to operate here in the Philippines. So they had a little higher price than other uh, wallets. So we found it too uh, expensive for us. Yeah, it was uh, just 100 million peso capitalization requirement okay. so that we can operate an e-wallet. So for a startup company, that's like very difficult. Yeah. No, just, absolutely. Yeah. And when the pandemic came, we put Paitaka actually in the backseat for a while and then we were on hold so we created new uh, tools, new apps for the pandemic like uh, delivery apps and then Jomar got exposed to the cryptocurrency community and then uh, Lightbulb, Lightbulb Flash, no, no. we decided to create uh, or convert Paitaka wallet into a crypto wallet. 2018, uh, 19, 19 rather. Yeah, I was already in the Bitcoin Cash community community back then. Okay. Um, uh, we created some tokens at the height of the. I don't know if you know the Simple Ledger protocol tokens. Ah. Oh, so we okay, haven't followed it too much. Yeah, uh, we are. We were the creator of Spice. I was in that team. So that was my first entry into. Uh, building projects in Bitcoin Cash. So, but we already started with this wallet company uh, in the previous year. And I realized that um, there is a lot of things we could do uh, in the wallet space. And so we said, why not uh, build our own wallet? And also uh, the community in the Philippines, this age community is growing. And we've seen the need to uh, promote crypto and at the same time um, uh, create a wallet that can facilitate uh, a better onboarding experience, better payment experience. And so yeah, we get started with the work um, 2020, 2020 yeah. and yeah. yeah. Uh, basically the pandemic taught us a lesson. Yeah, how were you working during this time? Sorry? You were still able to meet and work on the, the app? Uh, yes. It was uh, home-based, yeah, home so based. Mm. we were not allowed to, to yeah. go around it. But then, um, mm. yeah, the, the government was pushing for for e-payments, and okay. that was an opportunity for us. Mm. And since, yeah, cryptocurrency was, during that time, was high because of the online games. Yeah. And then, there, we, we transformed mm. into a new uh, crypto wallet. Yeah. So we launched formally. Um, we did a mall, mall launch uh, in uh, at Robinsons here in Tacloban, just last uh, October. Yeah. yeah, October. Yes. Yeah, and I, I got to try the the vending machine that you had set up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That was really interesting. It was very fast, actually. Mm. Yeah. Because of that launch, uh, actually, we were in the news for a couple of weeks in the Bitcoin Cash community. And, the, and Joma received a lot of uh, requests for vending machines to be yeah, delivered to their countries. Yeah, actually, the vending machine was supposed to be like a promotional tool. Uh, it's like a side product 
the, the main product being the wallet that uh, it got the attention of a lot of people. But it's just interesting how a, a tool like that can easily drive the point that um, using cryptocurrency is easy, fast, is cheap. And it's, the experience can be a lot better than using fiat. So I think that was perfect. We, had the, we launched the wallet and uh, people uh, got their BCH. We had some giveaways. And then they uh, tried it immediately in the machine and they see it working. And uh, this is some kind of a, of a, like a preview of what it is going to be when we are able to onboard more merchants. Like they just can easily pay using BCH in most merchants. And you're primarily focused on the Philippines market. Which yes, is very yes. large, over 100 million people living here. Yes. True, that's true. Although the wallet can be used like anywhere, it's like a like right. a typical BCH yeah. wallet. So, in theory, our market is like uh, the whole uh, the whole world. But um, um, we want the onboarding to be local. So, although the wallet is global, onboarding has to start with right. localized efforts. So starting in the Philippines, but we plan to replicate. So if we ever find a model that works in our country, we will uh, export that, tweak that a little bit to, to other countries, especially the neighboring countries in Southeast Asia. Well, I think we've seen um, quite clearly that forcing businesses to accept crypto is not really a winning strategy mm -hmm. uh, in El Salvador. And uh, the way to actually get people interested in crypto and to continue using it after you've onboarded them is to start with businesses that people are already regular customers at. Um, if you're not, if, if they know your face and they know you come in, you're already spending money, and then one day you're like, actually, I'd like to pay in Bitcoin cash this time, then it starts a dialogue and, you know, potentially that might spread to some of their vendors also accepting it. And I think that's, uh, that's where the big transformation happens. So, I mean, what, with your wallet, do you think specifically services the needs of uh, Filipinos? Specific needs of Filipinos? Um, like, how is it compared to some other major Bitcoin Cash wallets? I don't think that. Yeah, um, well, Indeed. first... Either what it has currently or what you're planning to implement as features. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, we've been like um, always on the lookout for uh, technologies, improvements in the, in, the, in the chain, in the protocols uh, that can help us in, in making it easier for merchants to, to use uh, Bitcoin Cash. And we already mentioned that um, uh, Paytaka is one of uh, the, in fact, we're the earliest, uh, the first wallet to integrate a protocol called AnyHedge. It's a, it's a protocol for like, that provides for a way to hedge your Bitcoin Cash mm -hmm. against fiat. And we think it's a very, um, it's, a, it's going to be a very useful tool for merchants right. who, who are afraid of accepting Bitcoin Cash because of you know, sudden dips in price. So we, we are improving um, the, the experience, but the, but the tool is already there. Uh, it's already, that's one of the things that generates interest about our wallet recently. Um, but we, we need more improvements to make it even more layman. Right. Uh, so to make it easy, even easier for merchants to uh, lock the uh, fiat value of their BCH. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it definitely has to be simple. And of course, Bitcoin Cash is fast. So the next aspect is um, getting getting people to want to use it and see it as being more convenient and cheaper than, than dealing with cash. True. Yeah, that's the goal. Like to demonstrate the technological superiority of this uh, of, of crypto in general uh, and, and Bitcoin Cash specifically. Like, uh, for example, our demonstration with the Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin Cash vending machine, um, we didn't need any permission to, to build the tool. And actually, any de developer will not need any permission from anyone to build uh, tools like this or machines like this. 
So we would like to demonstrate that more um, that uh, unlike traditional financial systems where it's like gate gate kept, you need permissions, you need you need accounts like enterprise accounts in order to build um, like any application on top of it. Um, Bitcoin Cash is permissionless. Like um, if you know how to build something, uh, if you know how to create apps or uh, APIs, it, it's there. And we, as I, I consider Paytaka at the moment as more of a builder company. Like uh, we we want to build tools that make it easier for merchants. So um, we want to demonstrate this. Like uh, it, not just because BCH is cheap, it's fast. It's programmable and it's permissionless. Right. Yeah, and so so in the process of developing and expanding uh, the features for Paytaka, you're mainly you want to find merchants to accept mm -hmm. Bitcoin Cash. Mm -hmm. Is there a point of sale app specifically? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We have we have developed a point of sale. One of the tools that one of the problems actually we encountered was. How will merchants receive the money, and how secure is the the wallet? If they have just the Paytaka wallet, how about the cashiers, the staff? Mm -hmm. So the team developed the Paytaka POS specifically for merchants. Right. So that POS just receives BCH, so you can't really spend it. Yeah. If you need to spend it, just transfer it to the wallet of maybe the owner, and then yeah, it's it's a, a lot secure and safe okay. for merchants. We're going to launch hopefully this. December. It's December. It's yeah. December. And also on board the the, the our merchants. partner merchants who have been waiting since the launch. Uh, we <laughs> like have uh, around fifteen merchants that has shown interest and support. Mm -hmm. Just so here in the city? Yes, here yeah. in okay. Tacloban City. City. What, and what kind of businesses are there? Restaurants, there? there's a there's mm -hmm. even a rice store. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a meat shop, Cafes. coffee shops mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and a hotel. So yeah. once we get them on board by December, we train them with the POS, we can replicate it to other cities in Eastern Visayas. Mm -hmm. And if it's successful here in the region by next yes. quarter, yes, we're going to go to Visayas and the Philippines. And how do you see building a team to um, spread out? Um, yes, we have a marketing team. One, of course, Demi is here as the ambassador. She'll be uh, Posing, posing as the coach and she'll be training through online uh, tutorials and videos and then uh, our marketing of officer, our marketing chief, uh, Philip, will also help us. We'll be hiring, of course, uh, additional staff so that uh, when we roll out the POS, it's easier to onboard merchants and other potential businesses. Yeah, so you, you get a bunch of businesses, the people are already frequenting, mm -hmm. accepting Bitcoin Cash and then I guess over time you would also um, get some of the money flowing into the country through uh, the overseas Filipino workers to mm -hmm. also be transmitted that way. Yeah, that's that's one big market, the remittance. Do you, but do you have an idea how many of them there are? Or how much money is transmitted currently? Oh, that's, oh, that's, a, that's a lot actually, <laughs> yeah. OFWs, the remittance is, is one of the, uh, what do you call that, the soul, one of the biggest biggest uh, contributors to the Philippine economy. Yeah. But there's yeah. more of them than there are in the Philippines, is that? I'm not really, but a bulk of them really sends money to yeah. the Philippines back home here. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a bulk of the economy that helps yeah. us. And um, uh, because we've been announcing Paitaka launching it online, some of our friends, and we start with friends and family, they're interested to send us uh, their remittances instead of a Western Union or other mm -hmm. remittances, mm -hmm. they want to try the Paitaka wallet. They have mm -hmm. already actually downloaded that, but uh, soon, soon we'll be teaching them how to send it to us. Mm -hmm. That's why I said uh, that um, in order for us to uh, take advantage of the remittance market, we have to build an extensive network of partner merchants mm -hmm. so that it will be uh, easier and will cost less to trade the remittance for products, uh, for goods. Uh, otherwise, it will be almost the same cost. Yeah, converting to pesos, uh, your Bitcoin cash to pesos at the current time is going to cost you about almost the same as uh, as uh, other conventional remittance methods. Right. 
Yeah. So, but if we have this extensive network of partner merchants, you can directly spend. Um, then it, it it makes a good case that uh, this yeah. is a lot cheaper. It's even more convenient. It's faster, a lot faster. Yeah, yeah. I, I've seen firsthand. Um, most recently in Singapore, um, a lot of uh, domestic workers on I think it was, it was a Friday. Um, they were all lined up for their mitts on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, complete chaos, and <laughs> it seems like it would make things a lot simpler for them not have to to uh, waste their time and money sending sending money that way when they could just do it from their from their paycheck wallet. That's, That's so, the goal. Places yeah. like. Singapore and I guess uh, in the Middle East, yeah, it's, 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 yeah. Hong Kong. I believe mm -hmm. uh, I believe someone from Satoshi's Angels mm -hmm. approached some people in uh, Hong Kong a few years ago about that. Actually, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. but I mean, they're they're all over the world, right? So yeah, mm -hmm. it's a lot mm -hmm. of a lot of potential customers. Mm -hmm. Yep. You told them you've been flying, right? Yeah, she used to be a flight attendant. Really? Yeah. So we've been flying around, sending money to your family. Yeah, but most of the time I would send them just through online bank, which mm. is the most convenient way. Because if I use remittances, I would have to go to, like what you said, like people would line up, and then it would take much time for me. So the most convenient way for me to send money to my family back here was yeah. through online bank. Yeah, because they have online bank accounts. So yeah. you were away long enough that you needed to send money back instead of when you return? Oh, I would send twice a month. Okay. Because <laughs> I, I heard recently that everyone gets paid once a month in the Philippines. Is that? No, it's twice, twice a month. Twice, twice a month. month. Twice. Uh, okay. 15 days. Yeah. yeah, I think it's either weekly or bi weekly in the US, um, but it definitely um, complicates things when everyone's getting money at the same time and they're all. Going shopping and going to the banks and emptying out the ATMs. It yeah. happens. To you. It would be a lot easier if they did, they could just get paid daily or even by the minute, which you could do with Bitcoin Cash easily. Mm. Oh yeah, that's a that's a good point. Um, because uh, as I, as I mentioned, we are we are aiming to demonstrate the capabilities of the technology, and one of the things I would like to do is uh, to port our delivery service to the app. Because we have prototyped the delivery service actually during the pandemic, mm -hmm. and it works. But we were like jailed within Facebook Messenger because that's where the platform we chose at okay. that time to build it. And we we deactivated it now, pending more development. We were going to port it into the app itself, so it will be like a super app where you you open your wallet and there's the we call it Connecta, the yeah. the P2P marketplace plus the delivery service and in this system we're going to um, disperse the payment immediately to the merchant and also the share of the delivery ride like for every order they don't have to wait like uh, the way it's done in other platforms for uh, i think a week or two or even a month before they get their payout so yeah that's how the old system works so once we have this this one it's going to demonstrate really how powerful uh, Bitcoin Cash uh, can be in, in developing new financial applications like this. Yeah. So you, you mentioned a few different businesses already that are interested, that are common touch points where people will be spending money mm -hmm. on a weekly basis. Are you also looking maybe to onboard some of the transportation methods that are in the Philippines, like jeepneys and multicabs mm -hmm. and trikes? Yes, actually, that's one thing we're also exploring. The Philippine government, uh, well, during the pandemic, was enforcing uh, public transport to use uh, e-wallets also, or mm -hmm. e-payments, okay. it's like cards, everything like that. So most of the transportation here in money, like in, in China, and they use only cards in transportation. It seems like it'd be a hassle for the driver to deal with so many small, small coins. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. And so, you could just have a QR code that mm -hmm. the passengers mm -hmm. scan and then they have a, their phone up front that notifies them when they mm -hmm. get a payment. Mm -hmm. That's what we're, what, we're, what we're trying to to uh, achieve also in Paitaka. So you can order food, you can pay for transpo, mm -hmm. send money all in one app. Mm -hmm. 
And how is it to um, to purchase Bitcoin Cash? Is that something that's in, within the mm -hmm. app or is it through a separate exchange? What you mentioned. Yeah. Um, the way we have designed uh, Paytaka is it's non-custodial. Okay. So, and, and in fact, not only the wallet, but all the applications that we're going to build on top, they're all non-custodial. And because of that, um, the current regulations doesn't apply to us. Okay. It's, a, it's good in a way, but it's also bad because if the government cannot regulate you, you cannot get uh, permits okay. to like operate uh, some sort of an exchange within the app. We right. cannot even partner with exchanges because we don't have a license. That, that is, I think that's a common way that apps actually fund their development is through Partition. having an exchange within the app. Yes. Yeah, yeah, true. Um, but this this works well with a custodial one. Right. Yeah. But for us, we don't want to go that route. So so how would people actually acquire? Yeah, yeah that's a good question. And that's something that we have been thinking uh, very carefully. And one of the solutions we are we are implementing is to have a P2P run. Like uh, people who are able to uh, transfer uh, money from uh, bank from one bank to another, like online banking okay. or using e-wallets. Um, who might be interested to buy DCH? So it'd be like a local crypto kind of thing. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we we, we let them meet in one platform. You see, um, people who want to sell DCH with uh, people who want to buy DCH for pesos. Mm -hmm. So it's a uh, peer-to-peer, uh, like the way local crypto works. So yeah, uh, we hope to be able to do that by next year. So that's one of the top priorities. Okay. Mm. Have, have you been able to speak with people that are interested in, in uh, Bitcoin Cash and uh, through meetups or other, other merchants beyond Takloban that um, you have plans to like to have events to get people interested in this kind of thing that maybe are not familiar with it already? Well, I think that the events we had, like during the launch, and we had an exhibit for like one week, was it? Two weeks? One week. One week after the launch, so we had a, a booth in the mall that really attracted uh, some of the people mm -hmm. who are either new to crypto or have heard of crypto or using it. And they are interested because the way we we market Bitcoin Cash is that it's a payment crypto. So if you have other cryptos and you want to use it to pay for goods, yeah, maybe good. you can convert your other crypto to Bitcoin Cash, or well, actually you've been doing that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then use it to pay for stuff. So for us, we only need to onboard merchants to accept Bitcoin Cash. And eventually uh, we will be integrating as well other ways to, to make it easy for other people to swap their cryptos, mm -hmm. uh, like BTC, if you have BTC, uh, many people here have SLP because of the Axie Infinity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. do, do you see people interested in um, purchasing or acquiring uh, Bitcoin Cash as a means to get away from some of the inflation issues with mm -hmm. uh, local currency? Has that been something you've noticed in the last yeah, years? Yes, some of my uh, contacts already asked about that. And you're asking how much is the limit to send this age? But I don't think there's a limit. There's no limit. limit. There's no limit. And they were asking if if the fees are proportionate to the amount. I said, no, it's only one rate for all. So if they send like <clears throat> small amount or a big amount, yeah. it's I'd, the same. Well, it's just based on the number of uh, inputs. But, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but that's, that's very that's too technical. Very, exactly. Very minimal. So, yeah, still very we, we've got mm. we got messages <clears throat> interested to send. Actually, kind of uh, uh, doubtful. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of doubtful that uh, most of the questions I've been entertaining through through uh, our messaging apps, like where they're asking, like, can we send like a couple of millions, and how will we get it? <laughs> and uh, is it real time? Is it, can, can hypothetical millions. <laughs> Hypothetical yeah, millions. Yeah, and then they're asking like, uh, <laughs> like uh, will the government <laughs> ask about where it came from? <laughs> so yeah. it's kind of hmm. 
But I think in general, after the events that we held, um, and I, I'm also engaged in some uh, talks, some people, some events inviting me to talk. Uh, overall, this like we could say this are paying off in that uh, more and more people are coming to us to ask about what Bitcoin Cash is or even about blockchain, about crypto. So in that way, uh, I think it's it's working somehow that uh, we're able to spark interest of many people. Mm -hmm. So uh, we count that as an, as an accomplishment as well. The government mm -hmm. is really curious about blockchain and uh, Jomar is even one of their consultants. So yeah. he, he, he trains in So they have a Manila. positive outlook. They're not yes. looking to ban. No, no, no. Or very positive and they're really into exploring it further. Uh, sh uh, should we say maybe some segments of the government so, <laughs> are okay. open? So until actually we have like a legislation up to that level, we can never say if the government is like totally friendly to crypto. But at least many people in government, uh, many agencies are uh, really looking into how they can use this technology, um, either blockchain separately or also blockchain plus crypto. Right. Yeah. And um, that's a good development, I would say. Um, it's I think it's the best bet for the government instead of planning to ban crypto, just study it, put it in a sandbox, maybe study it on how to regulate it better, so that the government can benefit, the people can benefit from the technology. Well, there's there's opportunities for trade, especially yeah. with other countries, and even using blockchain to um, replace some aspects of government. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or simplify it. Yeah, that's what uh, Aaron has mentioned. We actually did a training for the government, uh, the, the science and technology department of our government. So they were interested about how to build decentralized applications uh, for government processes. So we taught them Solidity, EVM, okay. uh, how to create decentralized applications. And yeah, I, we're happy to see that kind of interest in the government. And I think that's a, that's a good uh, way to look at things. That's excellent. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, thank you, Nudge, for for having us. <laughs> no, thank you for being here. Thank, thank you for, for doing my job. <laughs> thank time. you for visiting us here in Tacloban City. Of no, all the cities, you came here first. So, yeah. Anyway, um, guys, uh, you can notice all of us are wearing Paitaka merch. Yeah, so please follow us on our, our, our social media pages. At, uh, yes, we have uh, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, Vero, uh, Instagram, Spotify, and Facebook. And also our LinkedIn page. You don't forget to share to like and comment and we'll be choosing lucky commenters or maybe likers or followers we'll be giving away yes uh, Paitaka merch the cap and also mm -hmm. the jacket Chocolates. and also we have mugs mugs and t-shirts yes the Ooh. giveaway to our followers don't forget to download Paitaka yeah visit the uh, actually just visit our pages and see how to download it and maybe win uh, limited merch exclusive merch from Paitaka yes and you can ask questions that we could answer on our next episode so that's a wrap thank you so much and we are very lucky to have you nudge you have shared helpful insights to our viewers and to everyone who has watched our previous episodes don't forget yes to follow our social media pages catch our next episode episode six and we're excited to see you again this has been demi this is aaron Jamar. And lunch. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.